Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis continuing our bleeding and coagulation disorder playlist. In the previous video, we started talking about fibrin lysis. Today, I'll talk about plasminogen and plasmin. We need to destroy the clot and restore the function. With that being said, now let's get started. Here are some of my previous videos in this playlist called Bleeding and Coagulation, so please subscribe and save the playlist. Einstein said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Some people tell me, your videos sound like you're talking to little children. That's exactly right, honey. That's exactly right. I mean, look at this guy. Look at these, like, pair of glasses. Why is this side larger than this one? Because it's relative. Hemostasis is the process of prevention of blood loss by stopping bleeding. Steps of hemostasis, vasoconstriction, the primary hemostasis, the platelet, and then the secondary hemostasis, which is the coagulation factors, then fibrin lysis. The first thing that happens after you injure yourself is vasoconstriction. It's a local myogenic spasm. It's automatic. It's awesome. After this, we have primary hemostasis, the platelet plug. First, platelet adhesion, thanks to GP1B and von Willebrand. Then platelet activation thanks to thromboxin A2 and ADP. This is the release of the platelet granules. ADP will help express this receptor called GP2B3A. The GP2B3A is used to fuse with another platelet. And then there is a molecule of fibrinogen here. Fibrinogen will be converted into fibrin in a process called the coagulation cascade or secondary hemostasis. And that's about it. After we form the clot and it has done its work, and it has ran its time. Let's destroy this clot and restore function. This is called fibrinolysis, which is the topic of today's video. The secondary hemostasis, we start with fibrin because this is the end goal. Comes from fibrinogen, activated by thrombin, which comes from prothrombin. Prothrombin into thrombin, we need a prothrombinase complex thanks to this committee of two numbers, 10 and 5, and two words, calcium and phospholipid. Extrinsic pathway activated by the tissue factor and has only one coagulation factor called factor 7. The intrinsic pathway activated by the subendothelial collagen and the high molecular weight kinogen and plasma colicrin. And it has four factors. 12, 11, skip 10, 9 and 8. Fibrinolysis. IN means protein and fiber because it's a fibrous protein called fibrin. And lysis is to break down. Also an ass to beat the crap out of the clot, man. Forgive my language. He who has a why to live can bear almost any how, said Nietzsche. He who has a why to fibrinolysis can bear almost any mechanism, said Medicosis. Why fibrinolysis? Why thrombolysis or thrombolysis? What's the purpose? Because if you leave the clot alone, it will grow and grow and grow until it will occlude the vessel, until it will press on local structure and you will suffer, you'll be miserable until you die. So fibrinolysis is actually awesome because after this clot has just blocked the bleeding, now it's time for you to go. Hashtag too much of anything is problematic. Something grandma will tell you. Too much listening to your crazy professors and you'll be mad. Now we had our why fixed in stone, which is to prevent the clot from growing and pressing on the local structure and occluding vessels. Okay, this clot need to go. What enzyme do you use to break down the clot? We call it plasmin. It's a proteolytic enzyme, which makes sense because fibrin is a protein. If an enzyme degrades or cuts down this fibrin, it's called a proteolytic enzyme. Lysis to the protein. Medicine is like a piece of cake, guys. Then what? Then this clot is broken down into fragments. We break fibrin down into fibrin degradation products, also known as FDPs, or fibrin split products. And we break down the fibrinogen into degradation products, also known as fibrinogen degradation products. Why not just break the fibrin? Because if you leave fibrinogen and there is thrombin, thrombin is going to activate fibrinogen into fibrin, forming another clot. We need to destroy this fibrin and anybody who is related to the fibrin. That's how efficient this fibrinolysis process is. And then what will happen to these fragments? Ah, uh, cleared by the sewage system. The garbage people, I'm sorry, the garbage organs 
the liver and the kidney. I'm, I'm just saying garbage organs, not because they are bad. They are awesome, but they deal with garbage. So if you meet Plasman in the street and ask him, what do you do for a living? Okay. I digest fibrin into fibrin degradation products. Okay, and that's not enough for me. I also digest fibrinogen because if I leave it alone, it's going to be fibrin. Digest fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products or FDPs. Okay, in short, I break down the clot. But this is not enough for me. Let's prevent new clot formation. Okay, I'll digest factors 5 and 8. Also, I'll digest factor 2, which is prothrombin and factor 12. Why would you digest prothrombin? Because if you leave prothrombin to be activated into thrombin, thanks to prothrombinase complex, it's gonna convert fibrin into fibrin, and it's not good for me. I have to prevent new clot formation as well as break down the current clot. So, all of your actions can be summarized in one word, hypocoagulability. Brilliant. If you leave plasmin free all the time, it will degrade every single blood clot in your body leading to hypocoagulability until you bleed. You form the clot, boom, the clot is gone. You, you injure yourself, you want to stop the bleeding, uh, no, no, plasmin is here. Okay. But this is not the case. Why? Because there are checks and balances on the plasmin. Okay, so plasmin is not free all the time. In fact, it's present in a precursor inactivated form called plasminogen, which will cause genesis to plasmin. Makes perfect sense. Who will activate plasminogen into plasmin? Several factors, including the great TPA, tissue plasminogen activator plasminogen activator because it's going to activate the plasminogen tissue because it comes from the tissue specifically from the injured traumatized endothelium so now i get it first you have plasminogen tpa coming from the injured endothelium is going to activate plasminogen into plasmin now plasmin will break down the fibrin into fibrin degradation products and it will break down the fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products. Awesome. But this plasma is not just free all the time because it comes from plasminogen. And for plasminogen to become plasmin, you better have a trauma because TPA comes from the injured endothelium. And this process takes days, in fact, which is very wise. Why? Because let's say that the injured endothelium secreted TPA and instantaneously plasminogen was converted into plasmin. Instantaneously, you will break the clot and you will bleed to death as if coagulation was not there, which is nonsense. Now you know everything you need to know about plasmin, but I'm interested in his father, the plasminogen, the pro-fibrinolysin, and the plasmin is the fibrinolysin because it's gonna lysis the fibrin. So, plasminogen, who makes you? I'm a protein. I'm com I, come from, I come from the liver, okay? As simple as that, okay? Why are you a protein? Because I'm an active guy. I'm gonna produce plasmin. Anything that's active in your body is freaking protein. Hello. And also, I'm a zymogen, which means a pro-enzyme. Zymogen, something that will generate an enzyme. The enzyme here being the plasmin. Okay, then what? Plasminogen floats around in the plasma and then gets incorporated, gets trapped, gets absorbed into the blood clot during its formation. Hashtag plasminogen inc. Prothrombin into thrombin. Okay, we're forming the clot. It's called secondary hemostasis. Please go on. Converting fibrinogen into fibrin. At that moment, plasminogen is being incorporated among the fibrin, among the clot. Until TPA arrives and activates plasminogen by converting it into plasmin, which takes days. Now plasmin active, it's gonna degrade fibrin into fibrin split products, and it will degrade fibrinogen into fibrinogen split products. Amazing. So once the clot is formed, this plasminogen, which is incorporated into the clot, is going to be converted into the plasmin, which turns around and eats the clot. As William Shakespeare said, even you, Brutus, when he killed Julius Caesar. If you haven't read William Shakespeare, there is no hope for you. Yeah, keep reading Kaplan Medical.
Words of wisdom, because I can't help myself. If it weren't for TPA, many minute clots would clog several small vessels all over your body. Without TPA, you will have millions of clots in your brain, in your legs, in your heart, in your GI tract, and even your genitalia. So, you should be grateful that you have TPA. Plasminogen into plasmin, thanks to TPA. What else? Urokinase. Urokinase. Ace means an enzyme and a kinase. Okay, you know, biochemistry is kinase. It's gonna play with a phosphate. And uro, because it was isolated from human urine. Ew. Okay, now we have plasmin. Plasmin, acting in its self-interest, is gonna activate TPA to produce more plasmin. And it's gonna activate urokinase. To convert plasminogen into plasmin, producing more plasmin, this is called acting in your self-interest. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay, so fibrin is stabilized into stabilized fibrin thanks to cross-linking by the great fibrin stabilizing factor, also known as factor 13. Cool. And you know that plasminogen is converted into plasmin thanks to TPN urokinase. But there are other members that activate this. Factor 12a factor 11a and colicrin we prepare the dinner being the clot then we clean the table called fibrinolysis prepare the dinner then clean the table that's every mother's dream come true plasmin what will plasmin do it will cut down no no destroy this fibrin into fibrin degradation products and it will destroy the stabilized fibrin into d-dimer the end product of fibrin destruction is the fibrin degradation products, also known as fibrin split products, also known as FDP. The end product of stabilized fibrin destruction is the D-dimer. Don't ever forget that. If those guys are going to activate plasmin into plasmin, who will inhibit plasmin because plasmin can be crazy. Too much plasmin is too bad. We have the alpha-2 antiplasmin and the alpha-2 macroglobulin, not to be confused with the beta-2 microglobulin in multiple myeloma. Watch my video on multiple myeloma to know what the flip I'm talking about. So here is a quick summary. Extrinsic pathway, thanks to tissue factor. Intrinsic pathway, activated by subenthial collagen, high molecular weight collagen, and plasma colicrin. Both of them will activate the prothrombinase complex to convert prothrombin into thrombin. Thrombin will convert fibrogen into fibrin. Once the fibrin is being formed, plasminogen is being incorporated into the fibrin clot. TPA, which comes from the endothelium, the injured endothelium, and urokinase, this process takes days, are going to be converted into plasmin. Plasmin will turn around to destroy the clot at which plasminogen is in or incorporated. Plasmin now is active, degrades fibrin to fibrin degradation products, degrade fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products, digest factor 5 and 8, digest prothrombin and factor 12. Plasmin did an awesome job. Thank you, Plasmin. Also, if you stabilize some fibrin, I'm gonna degrade it into a D-dimer. Bah ha ha ha. Those fibrin degradation products are gonna inhibit thrombin. Because if you have enough fibrin degradation products, why the flip will you produce new ones? Because if you leave thrombin, thrombin is gonna activate fibrin into fibrin. Fiber now has plasminogen ink. Plasminogen ink becomes plasmin, becomes degradation product. So it's a negative feedback to inhibit thrombin to prevent new fibrin degradation products because too much of anything is bad for you. Next video, we'll talk about TPA, the tissue plasminogen activator, and the inhibitors of the TPA. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Facebook and Instagram, support this channel, get the cases, get the notes by going to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. You guys are awesome, thank you for watching, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Channels, where medicine makes perfect sense. Medicine and sense, two words that don't come together, like airline service.